It's October 31st. I finally have my voice back. So we've decided to start making videos again. And we're going to start out uh, with another entry in our Typewriter 301. This is Advanced Typewriter this Studies. Doctorate level stuff. That's right. If, uh, if you're not serious about typewriters, just go ahead and close the browser window right now. <laughs> Watch just, something Just else. walk away. Uh, what, so what we have here is uh, actually a follow-on. The earlier video we did where we compared two typewriters, uh, the ABC Ilk was fairly popular, got some good feedback. So we've decided to follow up on something we mentioned while we were talking about this, which is the conversion of a typewriter from individual type bar bearings to a slotted segment. So here's, here's a machine we saw when we were talking about type bar bearings before, the Remington Smith Premier 30. And actually, this came up here today because we're going to JB weld the frame. Right, we're going to we're going to JB weld that frame today. It's uh, it's about sixty six or seven yeah, degrees outside. Really warm up this far uh, north for, for this late in October. This is probably the last day we're going to have like this. So yep. since JB weld doesn't like temperatures below about fifty or so, yep. this is an optimal time to do it now or never. And here's a typewriter you've seen before on the website. Uh, I actually had this down at Herman's Typewriter Gathering, and I don't think it even got out of the car. Oh, you really? Uh, yeah, I, I, I never took it out. The Betts Visible made it out, and of course the Visigraph, but this stayed as ballast <laughs> in the car. This is a Smith Premier 60. So, Are those, at first glance, those look like the same machine, don't they? They sure do, and uh, we've we've actually... Here's a little secret. We've actually had these out here for about 15 or 20 minutes comparing them, and we had time to take one side panel off of each typewriter. You'll note that these machines are originally normally fully enclosed, but we've, we've done a little video prep this time to save you all the excitement of watching us pull eight screws out <laughs> and remove side panels. <laughs> but uh, Dave's right. From about here up, yeah, and from, from here back at that level, these these are the same typewriters. Yep, on top of the top deck, they're about the same, and the yeah. keyboard looks pretty much the same. That's right. The frame, the whole frame of the typewriter is basically the same. That's right. The bottom frame's the same. The paper table's a little different. Let's get a good look at this. Uh, I'll tell you, there's there's that one blog out there where the, the I showed it to you, uh, where the one other researcher has been further documenting all of the uh, monarch yeah. pattern names. That's a yeah. that's a great site. It's uh, no no false humility here, but it's nice to know that somebody's actually taking some of the work we did and building on it. None of those right. things did we put up there intending them to be static or the end all be all. No, so no. that's just fabulous. If I if I remember when I get done I will put a link to that <laughs> right. in in down there in the description box. And if I don't remember, well You'll have to find it on your that's Google. Right. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can find it. <laughs> it's uh, it's getting a lot of hits. It seems pretty popular. So anyway, this is a Remington Smith Premier Thirty. The Smith Premier Sixty. Now, the important difference between these two machines. You've all seen this before. Individual type bar mountings. Slotted segment. And that's that's not something you can just do. No, <laughs> no. You from a can't, technical standpoint, you can't just insert a slotted segment. Right. Most of these typewriters, with type bars like this, as we've seen before, pull them from behind, and you can see right there. You can see that pretty well. Yep, you can see right there. We showed you this before. Yep. That's a great view. Yeah. Pull. But it's pulling from the back of that type bar and there's a return spring you can see there pulling it back yep now on this typewriter nothing's getting through there you can't do that yeah this thing uh well you can't you can it's see really it's hard even... to see yeah with that with that there you go heavy casting there you really can't you can see yeah, you can see right there. If you look, there's yep. a that one. I'm that's moving one right of the there. wires. Right, there's a rod. We'll that's show you those from the side. You'll yep. be able to see in a minute. And that pushes the tight bar. Let's see if I can get the outer one. Yep, that pushes the. Um, see that tight bar. 
Look there. how and look how different the bar the type bars are. This is a stamp piece of metal with a stiffener in it. Yeah, you'll notice it's it's chamfered. Which which by the way, I want to point out that advertising for this thing said that it incorporated all bar lock improvements, one of which was those uh stiffened type bars. That does not have stiffened type bars. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. So yeah. I don't think so. So but any anyway, anyway, I digress. That's all for the book. Plug. <laughs> shameless self-promotion. Yeah, shameless self-promotion. <laughs> and and why not? It's our channel. Right. But this doesn't this is nothing like that. In fact, again, this is more like the the Visigraph with the uh, yep, you've pin got, mounted slug. Yep, and and, and look how small those flat are. Flat bar, and then I, as Will noted when we were out here, this also has the typeface protectors. That's right, just like that Smith so Corona subsequent 76 we saw. Yep, you're right, not yeah. Gonna, subsequent, if you try to jam the type bars, it won't right. hurt it. And these are even numbered for their length and their position in the segment, too. Yep. They, have, they have a number on the, on the, on the type right. bar. So that's so very let's, different. So, so the question is for all of our typewriter three hundred one students: How do you do that? Well, let's yeah. let's let's answer that. Let's answer that question. That's actually why we ripped the side panels off. So maybe Dave, if you could spin those around, so we can. Yeah, that's there. You go. Right. So this, this here, this. This is now. Just think. Just think of this as the monarch. I know this says Remington Smith Premier on it, but just think <laughs> of this. Just think of this as the monarch here. Okay. So the uh, and it's really not focusing real well right now. I don't know why, but probably because there's a zillion different surfaces in there. So if we see, if you get the outermost one there, and maybe bring the light down just a tad. There we go. Okay. So you push. You push a key lever. And that key lever runs along like this and hinges at the back and goes down. And through a pin and slot connection, it's connected to this standing lever that then goes to a link that pulls the type bar. We saw that from the top on the other back. side. So you right. Can, there you go. That's, yeah, that's, that's good that. view. That's a good view. And you'll notice, if I can get down here, we have all of these little springs which actually <laughs> are are they Chrysler look more like yeah, bars. or or, or decklid torsion bars yeah than anything else that are hooked onto the primary key levers farther up with an eyelet okay well let's take a look inside the smith premiere now let's see what's going on in here okay maybe get the light down a little there we go ah those standing levers are moving forward. The opposite direction. All right. And if we look up in there, we can see one going by up in there, right? Because it's pushing the type bar from the back or from below. It's pushing an extension on the type bar mm -hmm. to get it to go up to the print point. Now, stepping back from these typewriters, we got to tell you, that they didn't change a whole lot in these machines. No. That mechanism is a different design. It would not be covered by the same patent, obviously. No. No. It is covered by a separate patent. Right. That's the original Monarch patent. Whether it says Remington or not, they owned <laughs> them. Is. Right. That is a different patent. But what they've managed to do in what's Amazing a, 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 case of, a, a case of very solid engineering, it's in the same frame. We, yeah. we can find very few differences between these two frames. Mm -hmm. So in converting this typewriter to slotted segment, they did not have to change any of the major portions of the typewriter. Well, let's point out something here while we're looking in the sides that might not be immediately obvious. or Well, it may, depending on your familiarity with these. Let's, let's, push, the right, shift let's, key. let's push the shift key on, the, on this one. Okay, so that... The basket or the the mounting, the mounting goes is up. normally down, and you're raising it to shift. Yep. Okay. Now let's let's look at this one. Holy yep. mackerel! They reversed. Yep. That's a <laughs> they reversed right. the direction. Yep. And that's something that uh, I I think Elsie Smiths did that. Elsie Smith started out as an upshift and went to a downshift. And yet, it's the same. It's the same mechanism essentially. 
moving in the opposite right. direction. Now, Dave noticed on this machine, oh, this, this, is interesting. This, yeah. this apparently non-prototypical spring here, which certainly looks to us as if it was added as an afterthought. Maybe somebody didn't think the shift returned quickly enough, so it's got a little extra force Right. Added, added on there. Note, note to whoever was using this in uh, 1940 or yeah. whatever year, you might want to lubricate that. Yeah. And maybe it. Yep. That that probably shouldn't. <laughs> but that's probably this is clearly not necessary. Original. Yeah. While we're talking about springs, should we look underneath? Yeah. Flip them over. Flip them over, and you can see. Now we're going to again look at that difference in the shift mechanisms here. Right. Moment. We'll be able to see. Now you can see a big difference between the two. Right here, and on get, this, on the Remington Monarch, on the original, or I should say the Remington Smith Mirror, which is the Monarch pattern on the left over here, we just have one large spring underneath. Yep. Over here, we've got two very large springs yep. underneath. That are holding the segment up. Right. And right. again, standing back, if you look at these two machines, look look at the nesting of the primary key levers running down on the bottom there. Very, very You see similar. that bale? Yeah, they, they look similar, but this has the standing levers uh, hooked here. Right, see they come up from behind and hook around. Yep. There's an open space on the top of them. And they're driven by a pin and slot connection from the primary key lever. This right. job, they're hooked here. Uh, they're facing the other way. Right, they're the opposite direction. They're attached by a rivet. Yeah, yep. and it's staked on one side and a rivet head on the other. Yep, but there's, they've done that to fit in essentially exactly the same frame. Yeah, and in fact using the same shafts, you know, almost exactly the same arrangement Mm -hmm. a, a amazing piece of engineering. That's to get really well that. done. Right, that's Very really well, done. well yeah. done. And what's worth noting, both of them work really well. It's not like they took a terrible one and made it into a decent one. Yep, there isn't not, anything wrong with this. They're not, they're not that bad. Yeah, no, uh, there's nothing wrong with this that this fixes other than becoming more modern, you know, eliminating all the multiple bearings. But Right. And maybe finally... Uh, Real quick, we can look at the back of them, just because they do have some unusual features on the back. These typewriters are interesting in that they they combine the uh, location of margins in the back where you can't see them, plus the confusion yeah. of having them being fixed to the frame like an Underwood, <laughs> so it's the worst of all worlds. That, that's, is, that is a problem. That's, yeah. that's the only thing I don't like about these. Yep. What's interesting is, again, look, remember... This typewriter says Remington Smith Premier there, and it just says Smith Premier there. <laughs> Made in Syracuse. Same. Same here. Same. So this had already been moved yep. from the factory Ilion back to the original Smith Premier. Actually, the second Smith, the 1903 Smith Premier factory. But again, as we stand back, same typewriter, same same unusual little tab stops mm -hmm. on here. A couple of small differences. This this has a, a trip timing adjustment. Escapement timing, on the escapement right. there. That one's different. Right, and this uh, one this one couldn't. There's some differences in this right. in this mechanism here as well. Right. But the majority of the typewriter is the same. So I guess the whole the whole wrap on this now 14 minute plus video is <laughs> that uh, you, know, you never really can tell when you when you look at the patents and you look at the designs and you read all the principles about changing a typewriter, converting a typewriter, you have to think about actually getting the machines in front of you to look. You know this uh, this is a pretty straightforward conversion change change to the to the what at some times was called the knife edge or knife blade type bar. Uh, for modernity, and it, to enforce alignment. I mean, there are plenty of good reasons to change oh, yeah. to that. There's a lot of good reasons to get rid of individual bearings. Right. This is this is not the type of change you would have seen had Fox, say, been successful in converting their machine to a slotted segment, because that machine actually had two type bar mountings, and two different lengths of type bar.
good luck with that. Yeah, good good luck converting that. <laughs> and that's why they didn't. Uh, instead, they came out with a portable, and then they failed. So anyway, there's your there's your latest installment on uh, in Typewriters 301. There will be a test. There will be a test. Right. I don't know when. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to grade it, but uh, there you go.